AWS Cloud Practitioner CLF CO2 exam domain one task statement 1.1. So this task statement, if we look at the AWS exam objectives of CO2 exam, asks us to define the benefits of the AWS cloud, more specifically knowledge of value proposition of the AWS cloud and skills in economies of scale, benefits of global infrastructure and advantages of high availability, elasticity and agility. Well, cloud computing and more specifically AWS cloud provides us with on-demand delivery of IT infrastructure so we can access it whenever we want, hence on-demand, pay-as-you-go pricing, instant access to resources depending on the scale of resources that we want, exact size and type of resources you need. So you might decide to scale or you don't need to have more resources that you basically need. For example, if your website is experiencing very high traffic on Thursdays out of the all other days of the week, you can decide to scale your resources on Thursday and scale back downwards on other days of the week. AWS owns and provisions hardware and software if applicable, so it can only provision hardware or it can provision software as well, depending on the specific service that you want to use. And there is, in that case, no need for expensive on-premise deployment. More information about traditional IT infrastructure can be found in my previous video about traditional IT infrastructure. In our everyday life, you must be using cloud computing, maybe without even realizing that you're using it. For example, if you're using Gmail, if you're re using services like Dropbox, if you're using iCloud service, it means that you are using cloud computing in, a, in your everyday life. A very basic example is that Gmail provides you with 15 gigabytes of free storage when you create a Gmail account. So whenever you receive emails, emails with attachments, they obviously take space and they are not hosted on your local devices. They are hosted on the Gmail provisioned infrastructure. Same is for Dropbox and same for iCloud. iCloud and Dropbox provide you with free storage, free limited storage as well, and you can pay for additional storage if need be. There are six advantages of cloud computing that you need to clearly understand for the exam. It's agility and speed, elasticity and scalability, fixed expense versus variable expense. To be more precise, you trade fixed expense for variable expense, economies of scale, no need to maintain data centers and go global in minutes. We will speak more precisely about each of these six advantages now. So agility and speed. As the word agility suggests, you can spin up resources very quickly. Imagine that you decided to deploy an application to test it, deploy it immediately. So you've got an idea and you need to get it working immediately. And you can test and deploy applications, spin up resources for those applications very, very quickly, within minutes, if not seconds. This will make time to make for applications shorter. So if application would take a month to test, for example, imagine that you are developing a new application that would provide taxi services for customers in your town. It would take normally a month to test this application for Windows users, if it's a web application, for Windows users, for Linux users, for Mac users. If it's a mobile application, it would again take you a lot of time to test it for Android users, for iOS users. And time to make for the application would take a lot of time. With cloud, when you provision these resources, so you don't need to have a server to set up Linux, OS, and etc. yourself, you can just deploy a Linux instance on AWS or a Windows AMI instance. And this, in turn, reduces the time to market for the application. So the faster the application is ready, the faster you can market it, publish it, and users can start using it. So it increases the overall agility across the organization. Across different teams, software developing team, QA, QC testing, technical support, they all obviously work for in different phases of the application development. And each team, if the re resources can spin up quickly and provision quickly, can do their job more efficient and faster and hence increase their agility among the teams. 
Elasticity and scalability. I really want you to remember elasticity term very well and more importantly to understand it. So elasticity means that there is no need to over-provision resources. As we discussed previously, if out of all days on Thursday you have higher traffic, there is no need to deploy 10 servers out of 7. For example, you normally need 7 servers and on Thursday you need 10. So you don't need to over-provision 10 servers. You can provision 7 servers and scale as you need and scale downwards when you don't need them. So that means that you are covered during peaks of business activity and resources can be easily scaled up and down. And this can be done with very short notice period. The resources can scale up and down automatically even without you realizing that this is happening just based on the peak activity or you can manage this process. But again, there is a very short notice period for this. When we talk about fixed expenses and variable expenses, I want you first understand what is the difference between these two expenses. That's why we're having a very short accounting session here. So fixed expense is the expense that you have for long term assets. It can be machinery, land as a equipment. In our case, it can be servers and data centers. Whereas variable expenses, these are recurring expenses to maintain your IT infrastructure. But in, for any other IT or any other non IT business, this is just recurring expenses that you continue to incur every month or every year. These types of expenses are also referred as CAPEX and OPEX, where CAPEX is something similar to fixed expense and OPEX is similar to variable expense. The full definition is CAPEX for capital expense and OPEX for operational expense. When you have a cloud, you don't need to incur fixed expenses. So you don't need to have additional servers or data centers, meaning that you trade fixed expense for variable expense. And this reduces your total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership is the total cost of assets owned by the business. And obviously, if you don't have fixed expenses, the total cost of your owner ownership reduces. Even if you trade fixed expenses for variable expenses, you still have lower variable expense present. So, for example, if before the cloud you would have to pay for employees, obviously their salaries, man hours, you would have to maintain the server room in order, you would have to maintain the equipment in order and different miscellaneous expenses, the variable expenses with the cloud are still lower as they might have been with on-premise infrastructure. Just to show you a better example on fix, of fixed and variable expenses, we are going to look at this picture of SpongeBob. And on this picture, the products that he is using to prepare a burger, such as onion, cheese, beef, burger buns, are variable expenses. So they are recurring. You need to keep buying these items continually, topping them up. Otherwise, your business is not going to function properly. But also on this picture, you can see a stove. You can see a kitchen top. You can see his spatula and different equipment that he uses to prepare this. Or on the left, you can see the, the machines that provide customers with Coke or different other beverages. These are fixed expenses that he invests in and buy in the beginning and they continue to serve him for years to come if they're being, being taken care of properly. Next advantage of AWS Cloud is economies of scale. Economies of scale offers the lower pay-as-you-go price at ca as capacity increases. Please be wary that economies of scale is the economic definition. It's not entirely IT definition. And we can face the economies of, of scale in everything. It just means that the more you buy of something, the less single unit price you pay. I'm sure in the place where you live, there are big shops where you can buy products in bulk and pay less. The photo that you can see on this slide is the photo of the ale in Costco supermarket, where, as you may see, customers buy product in bulk. They can buy toilet paper, they can buy juice, sauces, children, baby nappies, and etc. But whatever they do, they buy it in bulk 
So the price that they pay for a single pack of nappy, single pack of toilet paper is still lower than what they would have paid if they bought only one unit of this product. So lower pay as you go price. This is what it means. And in the cloud, as you provision more servers, more resources, the price that you pay for a single resource for a single priced unit gets lower. So it lowers your variable costs and it leads us to what we discussed in previous slides that your variable costs in the cloud are still lower than it would have been in your traditional IT infrastructure. And as I said, for a better example, think of Costco shopping or something similar. There is no need to maintain data centers. You might have the on-prem serv servers just to handle the traffic that comes from the websites, but still in any type of business, you need to maintain data centers to, to store data of your employees to start with, to store data of your customers, and depending on the nature of your business to store other bits and pieces. So almost all companies have data and data is one of the most valuable assets for many companies. That's why you can focus on key business functions and not think about maintaining big data centers. And more importantly, think about the security of these data centers. Because when we say that data is the business's biggest asset, if this data is stolen, if something happens to data centers, this can lead best case scenario to businesses bankruptcy and worst case scenario to lots of litigations. Because if business exposes or loses some data of its customers, it becomes the subject for international or national law. No heavy lifting to maintain and create data centers and AWS's storage solutions are aligned with many compliance programs, including PCI DSS. If you haven't heard of that compliance program, just Google it and you will see what it means. Also, it includes the different compliance frameworks such as GDPR that is active in the U European Union. So many businesses are obliged by the government to follow the compliance programs and frameworks. And the fact that AWS storage solutions are aligned with many compliance programs allows it to provide a better service for their customers. With AWS, you can go global in minutes. So because they have data centers and servers in multiple regions and edge locations. When I say regions, I mean different geographical regions. And when I say edge locations, these are more specific locations that are closer to end users. For example, we can speak about South Asian or Asian region, but edge location can be China, can be India. So somewhere close to the end user. And this is very important that AWS has physical locations, physical servers all over the world because it reduces network latency. So the server that provides services from India to Indian users is going to have less network latency. I mean, end users are going to have less network latency as opposed to servers that provide services from US to end users in India. And this is very important for users because when they have higher network latency, the performance of the website or application is worse and they usually don't stick to it. And it provides better customer experience when the network latency is lower and less CDN costs. So CDN is cloud delivery network. In the normal terms, it is the servers that cache the information of your website. So there is no need to fetch this information from servers all the time. But if companies use caching points for the servers, they pay for these caching servers so that their website data is cached in different regions and locations. So obviously the fact that AWS has physical locations all over the world reduces the CDN cost for the companies. This is the map of AWS presence points. More specifically, they have 102 availability zones within 32 geographic regions. 
and 12 more availability zones and 4 more AWS regions are coming soon. The ones that are coming soon are marked in red on this map and the ones that are currently present are marked with blue. So as you may see, AWS has a very strong presence in many points all over the world. 32 geographic regions are more wider geographical regions, whereas 102 availability zones are smaller presence points of AWS solutions.